cellulose is an organic compound with a formula, C, 6 hours, 10 O, 5, N, a polysaccharide consisting of a linear chain of several hundred to many thousands of I squared, 1 of 4, linked D glucose units. Cellulose is an important structural component of the primary cell wall of green plants, many forms of algae and the oomycetes. Some species of bacteria secrete it to form biofilms. Cellulose is the most abundant organic polymer on Earth. The cellulose content of cotton fiber is 90%, that of wood is 40 euro 50% and that of dried hemp is approximately 45%. Cellulose is mainly used to produce paperboard and paper. Smaller quantities are converted into a wide variety of derivative products such as cellophane and rayon. Conversion of cellulose from energy crops into biofuels such as cellulosic ethanol is under investigation as an alternative fuel source. Cellulose for industrial use is mainly obtained from wood pulp and cotton. Some animals, particularly ruminants and termites, can digest cellulose with the help of symbiotic microorganisms that live in their guts, such as trichinumpa. Humans can digest cellulose to some extent, but it mainly acts as a hydrophilic bulking agent for feces and is often referred to as a dietary fiber. History Cellulose was discovered in 1838 by the French chemist Anselmpain, who isolated it from plant matter and determined its chemical formula. Cellulose was used to produce the first successful thermoplastic polymer, celluloid, by Hyatt Manufacturing Company in 1870. Production of rayon from cellulose began in the 1890s and cellophane was invented in 1912. Hermann Staudinger determined the polymer structure of cellulose in 1920. The compound was first chemically synthesized in 1992, by Kobayashi and Shoda. Structure and properties, cellulose has no taste, is odorless, is hydrophilic with a contact angle of 20 a euro 30, is insoluble in water and most organic solvents, is chiral and is biodegradable. It can be broken down chemically into its glucose units by treating it with concentrated acids at high temperature. Cellulose is derived from D-glucose units, which condense through I squared, one of four, glycosidic bonds. This linkage motif contrasts with that for I plus or minus, one of four, glycosidic bonds present in starch, glycogen, and other carbohydrates. Cellulose is a straight-chain polymer, unlike starch, no coiling or branching occurs, and the molecule adopts an extended and rather stiff rod-like conformation, aided by the equatorial conformation of the glucose residues. The multiple hydroxyl groups on the glucose from one chain form hydrogen bonds with oxygen atoms on the same or on a neighbor chain, holding the chains firmly together side by side and forming microfibrils with high tensile strength. This confers tensile strength in cell walls, where cellulose microfibrils are meshed into a polysaccharide matrix. Compared to starch, cellulose is also much more crystalline. Whereas starch undergoes a crystalline to amorphous transition when heated beyond 60 Euro 70 AA degree Celsius in water, cellulose requires a temperature of 320 AA degree Celsius and pressure of 25 Mp to become amorphous in water. Several different crystalline structures of cellulose are known, corresponding to the location of hydrogen bonds between and within strands. Natural cellulose is cellulose I, with structures E plus or minus and E squared. Cellulose produced by bacteria and algae is enriched in E plus or minus while cellulose of higher plants consists mainly of E squared. Cellulose in regenerated cellulose fibers is cellulose II. The conversion of cellulose I to cellulose II is irreversible, suggesting that cellulose I is metastable and cellulose II is stable. With various chemical treatments it is possible to produce the structure cellulose III and cellulose IV. Many properties of cellulose depend on its chain length or degree of polymerization, the number of glucose units that make up one polymer molecule. Cellulose from wood pulp has typical chain lengths between 300 and 1700 units. Cotton and other plant fibers as well as bacterial cellulose have chain lengths ranging from 800 to 10,000 units. Molecules with very small chain length resulting from the breakdown of cellulose are known as cellodextrins. In contrast to long-chain cellulose, cellodextrins are typically soluble in water and organic solvents. 
plant-derived cellulose is usually found in a mixture with hemicellulose, lignin, pectin and other substances, while bacterial cellulose is quite pure, has a much higher water content and higher tensile strength due to higher chain lengths. Cellulose is soluble in Schweizer's reagent, cuprithylenidimine, cadmiumethylenidimine, N-methylmorpholine N-oxide, and lithium chloride slash dimphilfamamide. This is used in the production of regenerated celluloses from dissolving pulp. Cellulose is also soluble in many kinds of ionic liquids. Cellulose consists of crystalline and amorphous regions. By treating it with strong acid, the amorphous regions can be broken up, thereby producing nanocrystalline cellulose, a novel material with many desirable properties. Recently, nanocrystalline cellulose was used as the filler phase in bio-based polymer matrices to produce nanocomposites with superior thermal and mechanical properties. Processing, assay, given a cellulose-containing material, the carbohydrate portion that does not dissolve in a 17.5% solution of sodium hydroxide at 20 AA degrees Celsius is I plus or minus cellulose, which is true cellulose. Acidification of the extract precipitates I squared cellulose. The portion that dissolves in base but does not precipitate with acid is I cubed cellulose. Cellulose can be assayed using a method described by Degraff in 1969 where the fiber is dissolved in acetic and nitric acid to remove lignin, hemicellulose, and xylosans. The resulting cellulose is allowed to react with anthronin sulfuric acid. The resulting colored compound is assayed spectrophotometrically at a wavelength of approximately 635 nanometers. In addition, cellulose is represented by the difference between acid detergent fiber and acid detergent lignin. Biosynthesis in vascular plant cellulose is synthesized at the plasma membrane by rosette terminal complexes. The RTCs are hexameric protein structures, approximately 25 nanometers in diameter, that contain the cellulose synthase enzymes that synthesize the individual cellulose chains. Each RTC floats in the cell's plasma membrane and spins a microfibril into the cell wall. RTCs contain at least three different cellulose syntheses, encoded by CESA genes, in an unknown stoichiometry. Separate sets of CESA genes are involved in primary and secondary cell wall biosyntheses. Cellulose synthesis requires chain initiation and elongation, and the two processes are separate. CESA glucosyl transferase initiates cellulose polymerization using a steroid primer, cetosterol beta-glucoside, and UDP glucose. Cellulose synthase utilizes UDPD glucose precursors to elongate the growing cellulose chain. A cellulose may function to cleave the primer from the mature chain. Cellulose is also synthesized by animals, particularly in the tests of ascidians, although it is also a minor component of mammalian connective tissue. Breakdown Cellulolysis is the process of breaking down cellulose into smaller polysaccharides called cellodextrins or completely into glucose units. This is a hydrolysis reaction. Because cellulose molecules bind strongly to each other, cellulolysis is relatively difficult compared to the breakdown of other polysaccharides. However, this process can be significantly intensified in a proper solvent, for example in an ionic liquid. Most mammals have only very limited ability to digest dietary fibers such as cellulose. Some ruminants like cows and sheep contain certain symbiotic anaerobic bacteria in the flora of the rumen, and these bacteria produce enzymes called cellulases that help the microorganism to break down cellulose. The breakdown products are then used by the bacteria for proliferation. The bacterial mass is later digested by the ruminant in its digestive system. Similarly, lower termites contain in their hinge certain flagellate protozoa which produce such enzymes. Higher termites contain bacteria for the job. Some termites may also produce cellulase of their own. Fungi, which in nature are responsible for recycling of nutrients, are also able to break down cellulose. The enzymes utilized to cleave the glycosidic linkage in cellulose are glycoside hydrolases including endo-acting cellulases and exo-acting glucosidases. 
Such enzymes are usually secreted as part of mulchenzyme complexes that may include docarins and carbohydrate binding modules. Hemicellulose Hemicellulose is a polysaccharide related to cellulose that comprises about 20% of the biomass of most plants. In contrast to cellulose, hemicellulose is derived from several sugars in addition to glucose, especially xylose but also including mannose, galactose, rhamnose, and arabinose. Hemicellulose consists of shorter chains a euro around 200 sugar units. Furthermore, hemicellulose is branched, whereas cellulose is unbranched. Derivatives The hydroxyl groups of cellulose can be partially or fully reacted with various reagents to afford derivatives with useful properties like mainly cellulose esters and cellulose ethers. In principle, though not always in current industrial practice, Cellulosic polymers are renewable resources. Ester derivatives include, the cellulose acetate and cellulose triacetate are film and fiber forming materials that find a variety of uses. The nitrocellulose was initially used as an explosive and was an early film forming material. With camphor, nitrocellulose gives celluloid. Ether derivatives include, the sodium carboxymethyl cellulose can be cross-linked to give the crosamylose sodium for use as a disintegrant in pharmaceutical formulations. Applications Cellulose for industrial use is mainly obtained from wood pulp and cotton. The craft process is used to separate cellulose from lignin, another major component of plant matter. Paper products Cellulose is the major constituent of paper, paperboard, and cardstock. Fibers Cellulose is the main ingredient of textiles made from cotton, linen, and other plant fibers. It can be turned into rayon, an important fiber that has been used for textiles since the beginning of the 20th century. Both cellophane and rayon are known as regenerated cellulose fibers. They are identical to cellulose in chemical structure and are usually made from dissolving pulp via viscose. A more recent and environmentally friendly method to produce a form of rayon is the lyochel process. Consumables, microcrystalline cellulose and powdered cellulose are used as inactive fillers in drug tablets and as thickeners and stabilizers in processed foods. Cellulose powder is, for example, used in Kraft's Parmesan cheese to prevent caking inside the tube. Science Cellulose is used in the laboratory as a stationary phase for thin layer chromatography. Cellulose fibers are also used in liquid filtration, sometimes in combination with diatomaceous earth or other filtration media, to create a filter bed of inert material. Energy crops The major combustible component of non-food energy crops is cellulose, with lignin second. Non-food energy crops produce more usable energy than edible energy crops but still compete with food crops for agricultural land and water resources. Typical non-food energy crops include industrial hemp, switchgrass, miscanthus, sulix, willow, and popular species. Biofuel, TU-103, a strain of Clostridium bacteria found in zebra waste, can convert nearly any form of cellulose into butanol fuel. Building material, Hydroxyl bonding of cellulose in water produces a sprayable, moldable material as an alternative to the use of plastics and resins. The recyclable material can be made water and fire resistant. It provides sufficient strength for use as a building material. Cellulose insulation made from recycled paper is becoming popular as an environmentally preferable material for building insulation. It can be treated with boric acid as a fire retardant. Miscellaneous, cellulose can be converted into cellophane, a thin transparent film. Cellulose is the raw material in the manufacture of nitrocellulose which is used in smokeless gunpowder. It is the base material for the celluloid that was used for photographic and movie films until the mid-1930s. Cellulose is used to make water-soluble adhesives and binders such as methyl cellulose and carboxymethyl cellulose which are used in wallpaper paste. Cellulose is further used to make hydrophilic and highly absorbent sponges. References External links Structure and Morphology of Cellulose by Serge Par Copyright Res and William Mackey, Sam of CNRS, Cellulose, by Martin Chaplin, London South Bank University, 
Clear description of a cellulose assay method at the Cotton Fiber Biosciences Unit of the USDA. Cellulose films could provide flapping wings and cheap artificial muscles for robots. A Eurotechnologyreview.com, a list of cellulolytic bacteria, CDC, NIOSH Pocket Guide to Chemical Hazards, Cellulose.